Okay, folks, so quick video lesson on crude oil, hydrocarbons, and alkanes. So you've already had two lessons on crude oil and fractional distillation, and then you've had a bit of a lesson on alkanes, but I'm hoping that this will be a lesson that's summarised in the previous two and also going into highlighting some of the specific knowledge that you need. Um, so we're going to start off with a quick quiz. So if you can pause the video and have a go at these questions. So make sure you hit pause. I'm going to go through the answers in five, four, three, two, one. And before I go through the answers, I'd like you to hit pause and actually do the questions instead of just playing. And you, we all know that quite a few of you didn't do these questions. So pause it and actually do these questions now. Right. I'm going to go through these. So how is crude oil separated? So that is fractional distillation. What elements are alkanes made from? So that would be carbon and hydrogen. What's the general formula of an alkane? So that's C, N, H, 2, N, plus 2. What is bitumen used for? Making roads and roofs, roofs. Wrong. I'm going to go roofs. No, that looks wrong. Roofs. With a V. Mm -hmm. Thanks, miss. Right. Roads and roofs. And draw a molecule of propane. Three carbons. With eight hydrogens. I will go through this a bit later in this video. But if you look up here, CNH2N plus two. So CN. If N is three, so CN, N is three, because there's three Cs. So two lots of three, six plus two is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's kind of where this comes from. Okay. So first, so these are the specific facts you need to know about crude oil. So crude oil is a complex mixture of hydrocarbons. It contains molecules in which carbon atoms are in chains or rings. It's an important source of useful substances, so fuels and feedstock for the petrochemical industry, and it's a finite resource. What is crude oil? So crude oil is it's a fossil fuel. It's that thick black stuff. It comes from the decayed, it's from decayed organic matter, so like ancient plants and animals from millions and millions of years ago and it's all been decayed squished down and ends up as crude oil so just to tackle these individually and then like humans dig down and pump out of the ground or whatever um there's an awesome film you should watch called deep water horizon um deep water horizon it was on Netflix, I'm not sure if it is anymore, um, which is about the BP oil disaster from a few years ago. Um, so it's set on an oil rig and goes into detail of like them having difficulty pumping up this oil from the ground. Um, it's great. If you're not really sure what crude oil is, definitely well worth a watch, but not instead of this video. Watch this video first. So a complex mixture of hydrocarbons. So complex, it's a complicated mixture. So it's got loads and loads of different types of hydrocarbons in it. It's got molecules in which carbon atoms are in chains or rings. So carbon, 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 carbon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll do eight. Eight. I'm going to have to write my title there. So that is a chain of carbon. We will put the hydrogens in. I'm not gonna sit and make you watch while I draw all the hydrogens. I just want you to assume 
that there's a hydrogen on the end of all of these bonds. So this is a chain of carbon atoms. <clears throat> this particular one would be called octane because there's eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That would be octane. That's a chain of carbon. If we have a shorter chain, that's propane. Shorter chain, ethane. The shortest chain would be one, which is methane. So that's the chain. You can also get them in rings. So just draw one quickly. So it's just like a chain, except it goes back on itself. So that one, that is a chain of carbons. So that is, and these would all have two hydrogens bonded onto them. That's um, cyclohexane. Don't need to know the names. Don't need to, you know, stress about those. There's only you need to know the, the first four, but we'll go through these. But it's what has crude oil got in it? It's got carbon atoms either in long chains or in rings. Okay, it's crude oil is an important source of useful substances. So we use loads of them for fuels, um, fuels for cars, fuels for lorries, fuels for large ships, fuels for power stations. It's a really important source of fuels. And this second bit feedstock for the petrochemical industry so this is a whole industry based around taking certain compounds out of crude oil and making stuff with them so plastics all plastic is made from crude oil so we take the bits that we don't want to burn and use for fuels and we give them to the petrochemical industry and it makes them into various different plastics and materials so that's what it means by feedstock it's like the raw material that the petrochemical industry uses and then the very bottom bit, a finite resource. So it's not infinite, it's finite. It's gonna run out. So crude oil is eventually, in the not too distant future, gonna run out, which unless we you know, work out some alternative source of fuels and things is gonna be bad news for the human race. Right, how is crude oil separated out? So this was in the quick quiz, it wasn't one of the previous lessons. So it's fractional distillation, which is basically you're separating stuff by the boiling point. I'm not gonna go into huge detail of it here. Um, you can go back and watch the video attached to the previous assignment to it, but you pump the crude oil in, you have your big fractionating column, and then, oh, we've got petrol, kerosene, diesel, fuel oil, and then, one at the bottom. So you've got all the different layers, different levels. This is like the worst diagram ever, but. So, crude oil in. So crude oil comes in this pipe, heat it up, boil it all, and the pot, this whole column is much, much hotter at the top, at the, it's hotter at the bottom, it's cooler at the top. And then so things with the lowest boiling point, they stay as a gas and they go up. And when it gets cold enough that they turn back and condense into a liquid, they condense to a liquid and come out the tube. If they stay as a gas, they float up through the next one and then if it's cold enough here for them to condense to a liquid, they'll come out. If they're still as a gas, they go that way. So what it means is you get the, the things that have the lowest boiling points stay as a gas for the longest. So the gases come out here, things with the highest boiling points come out the bottom. And you need to know all these fractions. So this one is where you get gas, natural gas. This one is petrol. This one is kerosene. This one is diesel oil. Then we get fuel oil. And then we get bitumen. And you need to know the uses for all of them. So gas is used in domestic heating and cooking. It's the same as the gas that we have in the Bunsen burners in the science lab. If you've got a gas hob at home and you've got a gas boiler for your hot water, that's where the natural gas is. Petrol, used for fuel for cars. 
Kerosene is uh, jet fuel used in like the avi aviation industry. Diesel oil, some cars, lorries, that sort of stuff. Fuel oil is used in power stations and large ships. So like, you know, like the huge, massive shipping containers, shipping, not shipping containers, huge, massive, like, um, cargo ships. And huge, like naval vessels and massive cruise ships, those sorts of things. And then bitumen is used for making tarmac, like roads, roofs, that sort of stuff. So we've separated them based on their boiling points, but there's a whole, you need to know the order of these, you need to know the names of them, you need to know their uses, and then you also need to know the general trend in properties, which is reasonably easy when I tell you which properties you need to know. So you need to know the number of carbon atoms in the chain. I've just realized I'm writing that and I don't know if that's in shot, right, yeah. So you need to know the number of carbon atoms in the chain is one bit of information you need to know. You need to know the trend in their boiling point. So it's not, again, it's not for numbers, it's just to compare them. So the sort of question you might get is, what's got a higher boiling point, fuel oil or kerosene? Um, again, and it's the same for the number of carbon atoms, which has a which has fewer carbon atoms, petrol or fuel oil. So it's not, you don't need to remember that petrol's got between five and 10 carbon atoms in the chain. It's not numbers, it's just relative comparisons to these. You need to know ease of ignition, so how easy they catch fire. And you need to know their viscosity. Viscosity is how runny something is, how thick or gloopy it is. So as an example, honey has a far higher viscosity than water. If you have a glass of water, turn it upside down, wet table. Have a jar of honey, turn it upside down. Yet yeah, eventually you've got a sticky, horrible mess, but you can turn it upside down turn it back and it hasn't had time to flow out so that's actually how i remember which one is which because honey has a high viscosity so if something is highly viscous has a high viscosity it's really thick really gloopy right so go through some of the um easier ones of these so if i look at ease of ignition first if you're in a room full of gas and you light a match Fireball, explosion, worthy of an action movie. Gas catches fire very easily. If you chuck a match into a puddle of petrol, catches fire really easily. If you drop a match onto the road, it doesn't catch fire. At least I hope it doesn't. Right, because you'd have like a, you know, that road would catch fire and would set the next road on fire, which would then set the motorway on fire and you just have a huge fire streaming out across the entire road network in the UK. So bitumen really doesn't catch fire very easily. Gas does catch fire very easy. So ease of ignition. This is why the key thing for all of this, if you can remember the order these are in, it helps you remember all of these. Because you just have to remember, yeah, bitumen, roads and roofs don't catch fire very easily. Gas does. So then that follows the whole way up. So petrol is easier to ignite than diesel. Kerosene is easier to ignite than diesel. Diesel is easier to ignite than fuel oil. So you can just remember the pattern. So ease of ignition, so we've done that one. Um, viscosity, so how thick and gloopy it is. Gas has got the lowest viscosity. It's easiest, it's the easiest to make flow. Same as like petrol, okay, it's slightly more viscous than gas, but the pe petrol, it flows like water. Diesel, it's a bit thicker. Um, it's, a bit, it's a bit thicker, it's a bit gloopier. Bitumen, really thick, really gloopy. Um, so viscosity goes from low to high. So you only have to remember like one for each of these. Boiling point, clues in the thing. Gas, obviously got the lowest boiling point. On a hot day, the roads might, on a really hot day, the roads might get slightly tacky, but they don't melt. Like, so bitumen has clearly got a very high boiling point. 
otherwise in summer all of our roads would evaporate. And then in terms of number of carbon atoms in the chain, so gas, the most common one, so the gas that you know is methane. And we've encountered that a few times, if I draw it here, so this is methane. That is about as short a chain as you could get because the chain of carbons is just one. So the chain gets longer as you go down. So bitumen has got an incredibly long chain. Petrol, sort of like octane is part of petrol, so it's got eight carbons in chain. These are all still mixtures, by the way. I should have touched on that earlier. These are all still mixtures. Um, where I said, so crude oil is a complex mixture of hydrocarbons. So crude oil is a really complicated mixture of all of these things. These are all still mixtures, but they are simpler mixtures because they're, they're, they're quite similar. So bitumen is very different from petrol, but petrol is probably a mixture of maybe 10 different chemicals and bitumen might be a mixture of like a few, but they're much simpler mixtures. Right, moving on. Um, So you guys need to know <coughs> what a hydrocarbon is. So I've used that word a little bit. So all of these fractions, they're all hydrocarbons. So you need to know what hydrocarbons are. Hydrocarbon is a compound. This has like been an exam question in previous years. Is a compound containing, clues in the name, hydrogen, and carbon only. That's the bit people miss. This has been a two mark exam question before. So the fact it contains hydrogen and carbon is one mark. The only is the second mark. So hydrocarbons only contain hydrogen and carbon. Right. Now I've used this word alkane a few times. It was talked about in one of your previous lessons as well. So an alkane is an example of a homologous series. And I know you're probably wondering what that means, what I'm about to enlighten you. So homologous series. So if we look at sort of where that word comes from, that first part of the word homo. So homo means the same. So a homologous series is a series of compounds they're all slightly different but they share the same they share a whole bunch of things in common so we're going to look at these i'm going to introduce the first homologous series is alkane alkanes but other ones that we will look at we will look at alkenes we will look at carboxylic acids we will look at alcohols my children are stomping around upstairs, if you can hear it. It sounds like they're going to come through the ceiling. Right. Alkanes, alkenes, carboxylic acids and alcohols. These are all homologous series. I'm going to talk about the things you need to know about a homologous series. So in a homologous series, they all have, the compounds all have the same general formula. That was one of the ones in the quick quiz. Talk about that in a second. They all differ by CH2 from their neighbors. I'll talk through that. So they differ from CH2 by their neighbors. They have a Gradual variation in physical properties, which links to what I was just talking about with our fractionating column here. Gradual variation in physical properties. These are all alkanes. And so we've talked about physical properties like the boiling point. Boiling point gradually changes. Lowest boiling point, highest boiling point. And gradual variation of physical properties, and then they have very similar chemical properties. Properties. Right, so I'm going to draw you the first 
for alkanes, you need to have these memorized. You need to be able to draw them. But it, it, again, there is a trick to this, so it's not like having to memorize hundreds and hundreds of different things. So we have got one carbon in a chain is the shortest one we shortest chain we could have, and then we've got four hydrogens around it. Um, I'll only draw this for the for the first one. I'll, I'll rub it after, but just to to link the things that you know. So if you look at the periodic table, carbon has got four electrons on its outer shell. One, two, three, four. It wants to have eight, so it needs four more. Carbon and hydrogen are both non-metals, so they're going to do covalent bonding. Hydrogen's got one electron, H. So this hydrogen's got one. This hydrogen's got one. And this hydrogen has got one. So now all the hydrogens, because they're sharing these, the hydrogens have all got two. So the first shell only needs two, which makes them stable. And the carbon's got eight, which makes it stable as well. This drawing is just a different way of drawing this. So you've come across this a lot. This one, not so much. This is just a faster, more simplified way of drawing this. So that, so the formula for that is CH4 and it is called methane. So the next one, let's make the chain slightly longer. We've got two carbons. So carbon needs to have four bonds. So we've got, this carbon's got one, two, three, four bonds. This one has got one, two, three, four bonds. So we're gonna surround them with hydrogens. So the formula for this is C2H6, and this is called ethane. I'll come on to the name later. So, um, you know, I will, draw just to show you I will draw ethane so we've got carbon one two three four another carbon one two three four and then we've got hydrogen 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 let's add those ones on drawing's a little bit scruffy H, 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 H. So that is, if you look, carbon's now got two, four, six, eight, so it's fine. Carbon's got two, four, six, eight, so it's also stable. And all the hydrogens have got two, so they're all stable. And that is C to C, and then with the H's around the <coughs> C to H6. So, that's just a, you will never be asked to draw it this way because it starts to get, when, the bigger these molecules get, drawing them with all the electrons and showing all the bonding starts to get a little bit more confusing. That is why we simplify them to this. But I just wanted to show you that actually, the drawings that you've encountered before are just simplified that way. So the next one is propane. So we've got, we've got one in the chain, two in the chain, so now we're gonna have three. One, two, three. With the H's on here. H, 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 H. So that is C, three, H, eight. And that is propane. So those are the first three alkanes. So the homologous series that we are talking about here for the first one is alkanes. This is important, this bit on the end. Ain, alkane. So we've got alkanes. And so meth, ain, eth, ain, propane, because they're all alkanes. So the second part of the name tells you the homologous series. So ain, 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 because they're all alkanes and then meth, eth and prop is part of a pattern telling you how many carbons are in the chain. So actually it goes, you need to know four, but it goes mep, b, mep, b, because you've got meth, eth, prop, 
butte. So the first four alkanes, so meth, it's an alkane, so methane. Ethane, propane, but, so it's gonna be, the fourth one's gonna be butane. Hopefully you could work that out. Um, I know we said we were gonna do some other ones when we, in later lessons. So when we look at um, carboxylic acid, oh, let's look at alcohols. So the first four alcohols, meth, eth, prop, but. So you've got methanol, ethanol, propanol, butanol. So if I said ethanol, you know it's an alcohol, how many carbons has it got? So it's, oh, eth, it's got two carbons. Ethane has got two, ethanol has got two. Ethanoic acid has got two. Um, my next door neighbor's having trees cut down, so if you can hear a chainsaw in the background, which is just what you'd like in the background to every lesson. Uh, <laughs> right, so methane, ethane, propane, so butane, I've run out of space to draw it. If you wanna pause the video now and have a go at drawing butane, that'd be great. So I'm gonna start the video again in five, four, and actually pause it and draw it, right? Pause it and draw it. You know you're not. You're still not. You've got no face. Wow. Well, okay, right. So butane. So butane's got four, one, two, three, four, and then we have the hydrogens around the edge. H, 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 H. So it is C4H10. So that is butane. So to come back to the things you're supposed to know about homologous series, the same general formula. So ethane was CH4. The next one was C2H. Six, C three, H eight, and C four, H ten. Now, in maths, when you do a series, you talk about the nth term, and you're trying to work out a pattern. Going, what is the nth term in this series? That's a bit like what the general formula is. What have all of these got in common? So the general formula for alkanes is C n H two n plus two. Because in this one, how many carbons are there? Well, there's one. That means n would be one. So it means two times one plus two is four. So it's these all share this formula. This next part, they differ by CH2 from the neighbors. Well, if you think, how are we making the chains longer? We're adding a CH2 each time. So if you add CH2, you get that. If you add a CH2 to that, you get that. If you add a CH2 to that, you get that. So it's they're all differing by CH2. So if I go back to the one that I've drawn. So this is butane, C4H10. If I took a CH2 away, so I'll take the C and I'll take two H's away. Okay, so I'll join those up. That is now C3H8. So that is the previous one in the chain. If I take away another CH2, so I'll take away that CH2, I get that these bonds are getting ridiculously long, but to say drawing it all out, that is the next previous one in the chain. If I take out another CH2, take out the CH2. No, I'll actually just redraw that because that's getting silly. I'll add the H back in. That is methane. So every time you add a CH2, you're going to the next neighbor or removing a CH2, you're going to the previous neighbor. So we've got the same general formula. They differ by CH2 from the neighbors. They have a gradual variation in physical properties and they have similar chemical properties. So gradual variation in physical properties is like the boiling point changing. As the longer the chain you get, the higher the boiling point. They have similar chemical properties. They all catch fire. They all do the same chemical reactions. The reason they do the same chemical reactions is because they're made of the same elements and they've got the same bonds. So gradual change in physical properties, but they all have very similar <coughs> chemical properties. The last thing I'm gonna mention for alkanes which is different when we look at the alkenes. Alkanes are saturated. And saturated means, if you talk about it in terms of a solution, a saturated solution, you can't dissolve any more stuff in it. If you go and get a, you know, if you're making a cup of tea at home and you try and put 25 sugars in it, eventually you get to a point where the water can't dissolve any more sugar 
and so you just get like the sugar left at the bottom because that solution is saturated. When it's been raining loads and loads and loads and the ground is saturated, it means the ground cannot absorb any more water. It is saturated and you get like the puddles forming on the surface. The ground's saturated, it can't take any more. When we talk about alkanes being saturated, it means they only have single bonds. Saturated means there are no double bonds in it at all. So if I look at, um, let's do that one. So let's do ethane, right. That is saturated. There is no room at all. Carbons make four bonds, one, two, three, four. Hydrons make three bonds, one, two, three. There is no room to fit any more hydrogens in there. It is saturated because it's all got single bonds. I'm gonna skip just ahead very quickly because I'll go into more detail about this in the next lesson. If I put a double bond in there, so now this carbon's got one, two, three, four, and this carbon's got one, two, three, four. This is not an alkane anymore, this is an alkene, that's for next lesson, but this is unsaturated. It's got a double bond because technically, it's unsaturated because technically I could break that double bond and then I could fit some more hydrogens in there. So where you see the word saturated, you want to remember that it's single bonds. Unsaturated is double bonds. I'll go into more detail about that next time. Um, make sure you go back to Teams now. I'm going to put an assignment on there with various questions to do. If you need any help, as always, send me a message on Teams or email me.